Here we go with section 7.6, Garth and Decay. It's mostly a continuation of section 7.5, where you recall we had the equation y equals a times b to the x, and we said the coefficient a was in the front, b was a number, and then the variable x was as an exponent. And that was either growth or decay, depending on whether b was larger than 1 or smaller than 1. So we're going to kind of dive into this b value a little bit more by looking at two different variations of this equation. So exponential growth and exponential decay. Um, they're the same equation, except in the growth it's 1 plus r, which means the number inside here will be bigger than 1, which is what we said before for growth, the b value is larger than 1. And then for decay, it's 1 minus r, because that will give you a number less than 1, and therefore when you multiply by a number less than 1, your um, overall answer gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So in both cases, the y value is your final amount, the a is your initial or starting value, um, 1 minus r or 1 plus r is your ratio, if you remember that's 1 plus the rate of growth or 1 minus the rate of growth. This is all very similar to what we did uh, with percent change, only with percent change we only took one step, so a certain percent increase or a certain percent decrease. Uh, there was no little t value right here, but everything else was the same. Final value equals initial value times ratio, and ratio is 1 plus or minus um, the percent change or the growth rate. So r is the rate of growth in decimal form, so you convert the, the percent increase or percent decrease to decimal form. And then of course t is the time it's passed. So in all the previous ones, time was equal to 1. We were just looking at 1 increase or decrease. Okay, another equation we can get, or um, use for that formula, is called compound interest. So with interest, you're gaining money, so it's uh, plus, uh, but there's a slight difference here. We still have your final amount, or current amount, except it's called a instead of y. I don't know why, this is just the variables that the book used, but your final amount equals your starting amount, or principal it's called, times the ratio, more or less. Um, the difference here is that you can compound your interest uh, once per year, or twice per year, or 12 times per year. There's different ways that you can compound it, which basically means how often are you getting paid. Um, and so the rate of growth is the overall interest rate divided by the number of times you're compounding. So for example, if you have an interest rate of 6% overall, but you get paid once per month, then you're not getting 6% every month, you're getting 6% spread out over the year. So each month you're getting basically 1 twelfth of that 6%. So you take the 6% and you divide it by the number of payments you're receiving. So n is the number of times that you compound it, which is equivalent to saying, um, number of payments. Okay, and then since you've separated it out into number of payments, then you're getting paid. This n times t is the number of times you're getting paid. So n is the number per year, and t is the amount of years. So collectively, n times t is the total number of times that you got paid. So if you're getting paid once a month, then n is 12, and if you go for one year, you'll receive a total of 12 times 1, which is 12 payments. Um, so this formula uh, you'll be given, however you do need to practice using it. And you can use it to calculate how much money you'll get out of a bank account, or if you know how much money you got out, you could use it to calculate what the interest rate was or how much time has passed. Okay, problem solving tips. These are just like our percent change equations, like I said before, which is, I had always written final equals initial times ratio, right? So all we're doing is we're saying that this can happen multiple times, so we put a little exponent up here um, for more than once, and that's the new equation. So for compound interest problems, you want to be very cautious and go one step at a time. So the first thing is to write down what you know and what you're trying to find, and convert everything that you need to into decimal form. Second, you'll plug in the knowns and unknowns to the equation, and then finally you can start solving. So really do take this as a three-step process. And then the last is overall, remember the growth and decay structure. So make sure your answer makes sense. If you've got exponential growth, your answer should come out to be very large, and if you've got exponential decay, your answer should come out to be very small. Okay, we'll do a couple of quick questions. So the other thing about this, which I'm sure will cause you guys to have a lot of uh, anxiety, perhaps, is that the problems are word problems. So let's take a look uh, at problem number two. 
uh, determine the amount of an investment $500 is invested at an interest rate of 4.25% compounded quarterly for 12 years. So we can write down our variables. The principal is 500, okay? The interest rate is 4.25%, but we want to write that as a decimal. So 0 0.0425. Okay, t is 12 years. Okay, so we put t equals 12. And then n is the number of times it's compounded per year. So it says compounded quarterly. Quarterly means four times per year. So n is four. Okay, so once we've written down what we know, we can write the equation. A, the final amount, equals p times one plus r over n to the power n t. So here's step one. Sorry, I'm just kind of spreading out into the space that I have. Here's step two, and then here's going to be step three. So a equals 500 times 1 plus 0 0.0425 over 4 to the power 4 times 12. So in your calculator, you're going to do this inside part first, so let me type this in, 1 plus 0 0.0425 divided by 4. Okay, hit equals, you got now the inside of the parentheses part. We're going to raise that to a power, uh, 4 times 12 is the 48, so to the 48th power, this is why you need an exponential function on your calculator. Okay, that gives us this overall parentheses to the exponent, and we're going to multiply that by 500 and we get the final answer a equals let me see here times 500 we've got 830.41 okay so this is a money amount so if we invest $500 uh, then 12 years later we would have $830.41 we would have made a couple of hundred dollars profit and that's interest rate of four percent so you can kind of see how your parents are investing money if you change the interest rate from four percent to five percent what effect would that have etc uh, etc et so um, yeah this is this is the way that you do these problems you write down what you know you write down the equation you plug what you know into the equation and then ultimately you solve so if it's growth or decay you can either do one plus or one minus all right, um, we'll do the rest of the examples in class, um, and let me know if you have any questions.